My name's Sarah. I'm a senior. And I wrote this paper last year during AP Biology. Um, pretty much my inspiration for my topic was a book I read. It's called Oil by Tom Bauer. Um, and it's about the oil industry and how multifaceted it is and looking at the different aspects of what defines the industry, whether it's trading or the engineering process or um, CEOs that are um, directing the, some of the largest companies in the world. Um, pretty much just looking at, you know, accidents, why they happen, how they happen. And um, as a result, I wanted to do something um, about uh, oil. I wanted to study that. And um, I settled on a topic um, on oil engineering. And that was sort of my first broad topic. Um, not that I wasn't interested in biology, but I wanted to um, pursue something that I was already really interested in and just take it to the next level. I started looking at general press uh, sources, um, and they weren't too hard to find because actually, um, although I had read the book before um, the Deepwater Horizon accident, um, I started my project afterward. So it wasn't too hard to find articles in the New York Times or on NPR or um, different sources like that that um, sort of explained um, certain aspects of my topic. Um, most of these articles were focused on how wells are actually drilled, um, and I learned a lot about, um, you know, what materials and how wells are actually engineered. Um, but it wasn't necessarily exactly a topic yet. Um, so after that, what what happened was um, I started to read or I started to look for studies um, on my, on oil engineering. And as I went, I, I began to realize that there weren't too many studies out there on oil, on oil engineering. So I decided to, instead of, um, of focusing necessarily on studies, I switched to um, accident investigations. So I read um, several accident investigations. Um, some, were, some were, actually most of them were investigations conducted by the government or um, by um, engineers and scientists employed by the government. Um, and so that's sort of what I used to build my uh, paper around. Um, and my paper became about um, why are there technological failures on oil rigs and how do they happen? Is it, you know, is it personal decisions that, that um, people are making or is it just um, sort of a random failure, random technological failure? And, you know, I, I would find that both of these, you know, situations could occur. Especially studying um, the BP Deepwater Horizon accident, um, that that uh, accident investigation was um, s some 70 or 80 pages long. Or I think the, the full investigation was about 500 pages long. Um, I think I read about uh, 100 pages of it. And it just sort of, it, it framed the accident um, as not so much an accident that occurred um, just because of random technological failures, but something that occurred because decisions were made throughout the process to favor um, to favor profit instead of necessarily um, assessing risk properly. So um, a lot of times the company would say that when they brought the Deepwater Horizon to um, the Mekondo well location, uh, they were already behind schedule. The rig was already supposed to be somewhere else. So many of the decisions they made were meant to um, to uh, lessen the amount of time that they would be there, to um, to uh, garner higher profits, and it wasn't necessarily the smartest decision considering how it turned out for them. So um, I think what I found was that a lot of, you know, that there is a corporate culture, and especially at BP with the history of accidents that they've had, there, there was a corporate culture that promoted risk taking instead of assessing risk properly. And I sort of, I, I found that even after um, events like the Exxon Valdez spill, um, Exxon ha had been able to change its safety protocol, change its safety procedures so that it could create a greater s situational awareness on the rigs. And that so far has worked out pretty well for them. We haven't seen, although they just recently had a spill, there hasn't been quite a spill like Exxon Valdez that they've experienced. So um, definitely, you know, 
the sort of the culture that transcends throughout the company. Um, that definitely affects uh, how oil operations are conducted, and especially I found that you know these are operations that are affecting millions of people worldwide, um, and that you know just looking at what happened in the Gulf definitely need to um, promote situational awareness and uh, proper decision making. Well, I really enjoyed my topic, so I didn't necessarily mind reading um, about it. I I enjoyed reading about it, learning about it. Um, Picking the right topic was definitely a huge step for me. Um, some of what we did, some of the format of what we did, doesn't didn't necessarily mesh with me personally very well. Um, just because I'm I'm certainly more of a a um, uh, like a sort of more scatter-minded person and um, not necessarily super organizationally um, focused. So for me, um, sometimes the best thing is just to start writing instead of planning, planning, planning. But I think it definitely helped me get my ideas, ideas together, definitely helped me um, put it into a cohesive paper. Um, and throughout the process, um, some of the hardest stuff was cutting, you know, determining what to cut in the intro, cutting in, um, you know, the body. But um, I, the... The teachers that worked with us were very supportive, very helpful, um, really helped us to, um, you know, really helped me to remove excess information, to fine tune what I had there, to really bring out the topic in its finest. And um, I think it's definitely worked out really well for me. So, I mean, overall, this is, you know, the first truly um, long scientific paper that I've written. I mean, we've written things like labs before, but labs are not quite these um, long papers that we experienced with this. And it was certainly a really valuable, ex valuable experience getting to know how to write a methodology, um, getting to, write ha to know how to write a results of research and then um, an analysis afterward and that those are two distinct entities and that they're not necessarily um, mixed together. Um, it, it definitely um, will help me uh, format-wise understanding what tasks are and just knowing confident uh, confidently that I can write a 50 page paper um, you know it's not impossible uh, it's it takes a long time but it's certainly doable so um, just definitely gives you the experience and that's what you're looking for pick a topic that you like first because I know people who have done this and who have picked a topic that they're not that they find themselves uninterested in later um, definitely have a harder time than people who really enjoy their topic um, and I would say, you know, follow the planning steps that they do help, um, even for people like me who definitely have a hard time with that. Um, and uh, just embrace it for what it is. Um, and uh, because it's a great experience, don't, uh, you know, don't lose that experience that, that you um, get from doing this. You know, I've been able to put it on college applications, um, on all sorts of um different, you know, scholarship opportunities, things like that. And it's definitely, you know, I really think that it's made a difference. Um, and it, it gives you the, the confidence as a, you know, as I said before, that you can, um, that you, that you have the ability and the knowledge to do, um, something like this. So, um, and, you know, obviously don't wait till the last minute to write it, but <laughs> it's, it's a long paper. You don't want to write, <laughs> wait till the last minute.